question. Who do you work for? Barclays. At the end of the day, you work for yourself. That's just the truth. And you see, that revelation must be so, it must be as deeply rooted inside you as uh, uh, such that you don't waver. You work for yourself. All right? When we understand that, you know it changes the whole dynamic of our workplace engagements. Because when I know that I work for myself, that means the box stops here, isn't it? Yes. That means, oh, and this is the best part, there's nobody to blame. Isn't it? <laughs> We're not blaming anybody because we work for ourselves. But we take ownership. And I think that's the key word. When you own it, you are more likely to love it. Let me give you an example. There's a company I read about. This is an awesome company. You know, the company was going broke. They were having a turbulent period. Do you know what its, its employees did? I wrote this in one of my books. That book is not here. Um, I, I dedicated a whole chapter to it. The employees of that company got themselves together and went to refinance their homes and get money to bail out their company. They said, this company must not die. Now, how is that? Isn't that, some, isn't that something? Which hmm? company is that? It's probably a company you never heard of. It's a small company, but, okay. you know. And when I read that, and I heard about that, I said, that's what I want to see. That's what I want to see, isn't it? Now, does the love get deeper than that? No. All right. So how do we get there? How do we get there? All right. You're going to have to take ownership that this is mine. You know, I always tell people, I'm an employer. And I say, you know what? Um, everybody that works for me or works with me can decide tomorrow, you know what? I'm going. Where will I go? So <laughs> you need to settle it in your heart that... I am working for myself. This is not a stepping stone. This is home. We must create the environment for that. We must identify what I call the social benefit of working at Barclays. What is the social or what are the social benefits? Because I'll tell you something. Um, I, I'm into research and all that. did some research and found out that in an organization, if the um, social benefit or if the financial benefit is greater than social benefit, and I'll explain what social benefit is. If financial benefit is greater than social benefit, people don't do anything dramatic or remarkable because they're just getting what they're working for. But if we can create social benefit that is greater than financial benefit, people will stay. At that point, people are not just working for money anymore. Now, what do I call financial be uh, social benefit? Social benefit, those are the benefits that come to you just because you are working with backless. <laughs> now, I know we said that the brand may be a hindrance, but come on, the brand is an asset. Do you know, you get, let, let, let's, let's, let's think of something. We go to, we find ourselves at, in some remote country, somewhere, okay? And I say, oh, I come from a company called, and I mention a company, and they say, what's that? Uh, please stand aside. And you come and you say, I work for Barclays. Who is going to be allowed to go through first? Barclays, that's social benefit. Do you know there are certain people who will pick your phone today just because you work for Barclays? That's social benefit. Do you know there are people that because of your interaction today, you can call, all right? And they will listen to you. And you can you build relationships that will help your children, help your nephews, help everybody just because you are at Barclays. I remember Cynthia told me a story. She told us because when we meet, we, we ask ourselves, what was your social benefit for the week? 
All right? Now, it's amazing because once you keep social benefit in the forefront, then people know, man, there are things that I get from this place that money cannot do for me. Social benefit, she said, in her area, there was some insecurity. Some funny looking guys were hanging around. But in the course of our work, she has built relationships, even to the level of relationships with cabinet secretaries. So what does she do? She sends a text message. Text message to a cabinet secretary in the government of Kenya. So and so and so and so is happening. Two days later, those guys had been moved from there. Now, guess what? Could any amount of money have paid for that? Social benefit. Social benefit that you can pick up your phone and call somebody. You can get things that other people will hustle to get simply because you're in Barclays. The social benefits of working with Barclays. Monetary support. I would have thought so. Monetary support. Sorry? Status. Networks. What else? Sorry? Opportunities. I remember, let me, let me remind you, I, 2011, I developed something for the Institute for Human Resource Management called the HR Index. All right? Um, those days, Lynn was the HR director here. And... So I got to interact with a lot of people in Barclays at that time, 2011. And my goodness, do you know, in terms of training, right? You guys were right at the top. Training, um, exposure, as far back as 2011. And it's still valid, isn't it? Training, you know, then mentoring and all that. You guys are very strong on that. So, opportunities. Opportunities. I want to put training on its own, isn't it? And you know the good thing about training? Let me tell you something. I read a book called The Jewish Phenomenon by Stephen Sibelger. And in that book, he said, they, they, they identify why are the Jews so prosperous in different places they go to? And he looked at their philosophies. And one of the philosophies was this. It's a phenomenal one. He said, um, if you're going to borrow... Borrow to get education. Even if you cannot repay, nobody can repossess what you got. <laughs> Isn't that cool? <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. And so that, when you look at it, that you are getting a lot of training. Guess what? That's you. That's yours. What other social benefit? Exposure. Exposure. What else? Travel. I should put mentorship. Travel. Travel. Mentorship. When we talk about brand love, this is where it starts. With you. Okay? This is where it starts with you. That, wow. This is what, this is my Barclays story. Alright? And, Every one of you should have your Barclays story. Isn't it? Before Barclays and then now. We all have that. But you know what happens? We forget these stories. We must keep the stories alive. And those are the stories we must keep telling. So the new people coming into Barclays, guess what? Those are the stories they will hear. And that way, guess what? You love your brand so much, you're so enthusiastic, and guess what? Enthusiasm is contagious. 
And that's one thing I noticed with Chase Bank. That I had a bunch of, I had a relationship manager, I had people who were so enthusiastic about their brand that they would do anything for their brand. And guess what? They simply passed the enthusiasm over to us. But when you are in an organization where even you, uh, I was saying people in HR, are looking for vacancies in the papers, who then can be saved? <laughs> <laughs> Am I making sense? Who then can be saved? <laughs> if HR is looking for... <laughs> They were in trouble. <laughs> they were in trouble. So it is so crucial. So this, you must be able, you must, you must be able to remember these stories. The more you talk about it, the more you encourage yourselves about it, the more you have gatherings where you deliberately talk about your backless stories. Guess what? Faith is rising, isn't it? So you're always going to be so grateful. You're always going to be so excited. And guess what that will do? When you are now relating with customers, how do you think it's going to be? You are just freely, have you received? You just give it. It will just flow. The only thing that can short circuit this is when you don't talk about it.